and welcome back to another TechMinds video. Now in this video, we're gonna take a look at this HF and VHF four-way antenna switch, which can be used to either feed four antennas into one receiver or used in reverse, four receivers with one antenna. Now this antenna switch is designed for use with receivers only, so there's no transmit support with this switch. What's interesting about this particular antenna switch is that a biased T voltage can be applied to each of the four antenna ports at the same time. Now the biased T voltage can also be determined by the user, which we'll look at shortly. Each of the antenna ports and radio port is an SMA connection. And on the right side of the antenna switch is a DC voltage in. This is used to power the biased T on the antenna ports and power the antenna relays on the main board. Now when power is applied via the DC in, the selected antenna port LED will illuminate. To change the port, you can press the left or right push switch to cycle through the antenna ports. The three segment LED display shows the voltage of the bias T output to the antenna ports. Now by default, the bias T is disabled. Using the included jumpers, you can select which port has bias T voltage. Simply place the jumper next to the port that you wish to have power. Now, before attaching any devices to the antenna ports, I would advise to adjust the bias T voltage using the onboard trimmer. Now, mine arrived with a bias T voltage set to 10 volts. This is almost double the standard 5 volts bias T requirements. So, just to make sure that the three digit LED was showing the correct voltage, I also used a multimeter to check the output as I adjusted the onboard trimmer. Turning clockwise, the voltage dropped and I adjusted this to five volts. It appears that the three digit LED voltage display does correspond to the voltage that showed on my multimeter. Now some devices require just 3.3 volts bias T, so always check which voltage this should be set to. I placed the bias T jumper on ports four and one, so to test that the bias T was working, I plugged in a couple of devices. So the first was a hammer up from Nuelec onto port one and then applied power to the DC input. We can see the white LED illuminating on the hammer up, which shows there's power. If we plug the same device into port three and apply DC power input, we can see there's no bias T voltage as we did not insert the jumper for this port. Reattaching the hammer up to port four and then a sawbird filter to port one with power attached, we can now see that both are powered. So those jumpers do work. Now the specifications for this antenna switch say the supported frequency range is between 300 kilohertz all the way up to 150 megahertz. Now here I have my dual band collinear attached to port three and on port two, I have the output from an LMB which has an IF of around 740 megahertz, which is outside the supported frequency range. As you can see, when I switch to port two, I'm still able to receive the 740 megahertz IF from the LMB. Now, although to me, the signal looks a little bit attenuated, it still can be used. I guess a good use case for this antenna switch would be to have multiple HF antennas, like a random wire, loop or vertical attached to each port. And then switching between each antenna for optimum signal strength would be very useful. The current cost of this antenna switch comes out at around $30, and if interested, I'll leave a direct link to the website where you can purchase one if interested. In fact, the website ellykitsorparts.com has lots of other cool and interested radio related products. So it's definitely worth checking out. In fact, I have an upcoming video showing version five of the NPR packet modems, which I'm really looking forward to. So to make sure you get notified of when I release that video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Now, if you're worried about insertion loss, then it's just 0.7 dB, and that's from 300 kilohertz all the way up to 150 megahertz. So it's rather negligible. The DC input voltage must be at least 1.5 volt above the set bias T voltage with a maximum input of 16 volts DC. If using bias T on all four ports, then the maximum current draw of 700 milliamps should not be exceeded. 
so it's best to check the current drawer of any attached active devices like LNAs or up converters. Now one last point to mention is that if your radio or SDR has its own bias T output, then please make sure to disable this before use as you do not want any DC voltage coming in on the radio port. Anyhow guys, there we go. If you got one of these, let me know down below or if you have a different solution, what do you use? Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.